Hey, what's going on, everyone? Larry here from the Retro Gamers Podcast, and I'm going to do something a little different this week. Um, Anthony is on... Uh, he's working, <laughs> so he's unavailable this week. I thought I had uh, the Rona. Uh, I don't. Still was under the weather for a majority of the week, of the weekend, um, but I'm feeling better now. I can actually talk at this point. So, uh, but, uh, we still want to drop something this week. We don't want to go because we just took off a few weeks ago. Um, and I, I don't know. I kind of figured to bring you into a little bit of my life, uh, nothing major for the last, what, couple of years now, um, because of everything happening, you know, the world shutting down, um, I've been working from home and where I used to do the podcast up here. Um, I had to turn into a makeshift home, um, office. So that should be changing in a few months. So, uh, hopefully I get this section back as my podcast, uh, studio, quote unquote studio. Not really. It's just an alcove, but I used to have this wonderful background that I really enjoyed having to show off, you know, my stuff. And it's been two years now, and it's grown a little bit over the last couple of years. Uh, so I figured, why not show you guys what's been going on? So here we go. This is basically my limited, if you will, uh, video game collection uh, that I've been collecting over the last few years. And, you know, I'll, uh, and, uh, amongst other things, not all video game related. But we'll, uh, you know what? Let's take a look. So basically, in a nutshell, this is it. This is the background that you used to see every week. Uh, don't mind the mess. And, I mean, again, a lot of it has changed over the last couple years. So let's just kind of get right into it. Let's let's take a look at it uh, while the sun is still out. So, you know, kind of starting up here. I uh, got a, uh, actually a hand-drawn uh, Christy Hemi. Uh, from WWE and Impact Wrestling. Uh, behind there, I have in box, still in box, the Famicom Classic 20th. No, not 20th. Some sort of anniversary. 50th. Some sort of anniversary. But it was the gold Famicom. Um, and it had exclusives. I mean, just Japanese exclusives. Uh, never, never broke it out. I, it, it may not be in there. I don't know. But those look pretty cool. It's gold. So, don't mind me. I'm doing this in one take. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> uh, the Ultimate NES Guide to the NES Library. Pat Contry, the uh, Pat the NES Punk. See what you want about him. But uh, my name is in the book. Eh, backer. Of course, my replica Million Dollar Championship belt. Very cool. Something I'm very proud of. This is a, uh, for wrestling fans... This is an actual bootio from WrestleMania 31. No, 32. 32. Um, when they were in Dallas the first time. So, got that. That cost a little bit of a pretty penny, but worth it. Uh, moving over here to some of the video games. Some of the first video games here I'm about to show off. This is a SNK Neo Geo Mini. Uh, this one has to be powered up. These have to be powered up, like, plugged in to be used. Uh, this one's got, like, 30 games on it from Neo Geo. Uh, and what's cool is you can plug it into the TV. You can play from there, or you can play right from that. This is one of the two Colecos that I purchased. If you remember a few years ago, I was one of the first Kickstarters I probably did. Um, it was this, Robotech, and Rainbow Bright, which you'll see a little later. Uh, I got rid of the Rainbow Bright because, I mean, look how small the screen is. That is a tiny screen. And also, don't mind the dust. Um, fun to play a shooter on. Not so much fun to play a, a role-playing game on. So, I got rid of the Rainbow Bright, but I still got this one. The Robotech. Of course, behind it, which I think is very cool. An old LED WrestleMania... Based on WrestleMania 5... When the Mega Powers explode. Uh, WrestleMania Challenge. An old LED game that is not Tiger. It's a claim. So that's a nice part of the collection I like. Uh, oh, there we go. 
Uh, up here, I got some more wrestling paraphernalia. Uh, I got an old uh, Nikolai Volkov signed by Nikolai Volkov. Not too long before he passed away, so I was able to meet him, thankfully. Uh, I ended up picking up that. That's not an original doll of mine. I ended up picking this one up at the show I was at that Nikolai was, was autographing. I saw it. I'm like, oh, let me go back and pick it up. So it was pretty cool. Uh, this Hulk Hogan standee, he's a tall one. Uh, it's a, f a pretty interesting story on this one. I uh, see if I can tell it. Long story short, Anthony's not here to slow me down. Uh, I was at a flea market out here on Long Island, and a gentleman was selling this original, well, like 86 probably, with the look of that belt, uh, Hulk Hogan action figure. And, uh, you know, we were talking about it, came up with a price, very fair price. So, bought it, good to go. A week later, I go to another um, flea market out here on Long Island, and I run into the same seller, and I don't think he knew who I was. He doesn't remember me. You know, of course, he's not going to remember me. And he's like, oh, yeah, you know, I had this awesome Hulk Hogan uh, figure, uh, this one. Uh, but he's like, oh, I sold it, and I'm already regretting that I sold it. <laughs> so I'm like, rest assured, my friend, it is in good hands. So that's pretty cool. Um, I, for some reason, I started collecting, uh, you know, hot sauce. Some various different hot sauces. I got a cool Popeye hot sauce. Never tried any of these. None of these are open. Uh, you got your decent hot sauce from the Trailer Park Boys. Along with the Green Bastard Trailer Park Boys hot sauce. Uh, this is a cool one. The Bowser hot sauce. It's supposed to be pretty good. Actually, I heard this Bowser one's pretty good. Uh, a friend of mine actually tried it. Uh, a couple of empty uh, Broken Skull IPAs and Broken Skull American Lager. And a uh, Red Bull limited edition uh, Ms. Pa Ms. Regular Pac-Man. So that's pretty cool. It actually came with a code. I forgot what the code was for. Uh, unlock Red Bull Maze in Pac-Man app. So there was some sort of app back then. So that was pretty cool. Uh, this behind here, I'll take these down because these are empty. Look at this, an original Pong. I mean, it doesn't work. The wire's been snipped and everything like that. But just cool to have a Super Pong uh, with the different game sets there. I'm sure if I wanted to, if I knew what I was doing, I could hook this up. I doubt it. But it's pretty cool to have. One of the first things I got, actually, as a as a, an apartment warming gift when I moved in. So that was very, uh, very sweet and thoughtful. Uh, this bit, I love this thing. This is Kirby. And I picked this Kirby up at Long Island Retro Gaming Expo. Uh, funny enough, we will be there this uh, August. Yep, August 12th through the 14th. Get your tickets at liretro.com. Just a block uh, with a Kirby face. And the guy who was selling it had a whole bunch of different color schemes. And I just asked him, like, hey, do you have like a like a red, white, and, red, white, and blue color scheme? I'm not saying it didn't have to look like the flag, but just that color scheme. And he had it. So there we go. Oh, you mean to hang that up. But I do love this Kirby. And of course, I'm going to show behind that. It's a hand-drawn picture, <laughs> a caricature of my grandfather. So, there you go. Thank you, Grandpa. All right, so let's move down to the second row here. So this is where really the games start coming into play, no pun intended. Uh, sorry about the uh, reflection here. So as I mentioned before, Rainbow Bright, I had it for uh, on the Coleco. I remember I showed this off a few weeks ago, so I ended up getting it, though, here uh, on the NES. And it plays so much nicer on the NES. Uh, but just some games here. I'm not going to pull all these games out. I'm not going to mention all of them. Um, Rainbow Bright. Uh, Super Turrican, which is interesting. Empty box to begin with. Never was there a game in there. But on the Super NT from Analog, Super Turrican's built into it. So it just they gave you a box with it. Stone Protectors, which was Kickstarter. Mega Man, The Wily Wars, which I got from Castlemania Games. Retro Bit Gaming. Love that game. Um, Double Dra Super, no, excuse me, Return of Double Dragon. This is the Japanese version of our North American Super Double Dragon. There is difference in the gameplay. And when uh, I was doing the contest with Anthony as far as completing games, I got very close. Actually, I got to the end of this version of Double Dragon. Just couldn't 
Couldn't complete it. <laughs> uh, same with Undercover Cops. Uh, again, that's another one that was from uh, Retro Bit Gaming. Uh, R-Type 3, Super R-Type. Castlemania, Retro Bit. They put out some fantastic games. Uh, along with releasing Holy, Holy Diver. Great game. If you love Castlevania, if you can find a copy of this Holy Diver, go for it. Popeye. That was my first word. Yes, legit first word was Popeye. I love Popeye. I love the movie. I love the cartoons. So, of course, I have to have a copy of that. Moving on to some boxed, uh, more box games. Uh, some Super NES games. Super Famicom, excuse me. That Anthony picked up while in Japan. So, these are from... Super Potato, right out of uh, right out of Japan. Let me make this a little. There we go. I should make it a little easier for me to hold. Uh, Super Fire Pro Wrestling Three Final Bout, Super Fire Pro Wrestling Special, and of course this is uh, this right here is the Mario or Super Mario Pacross, Mario Super Pacross, whatever they call it. This Mario game is actually available on the Nintendo Switch, the uh, Super Nintendo Collection, North American too. Great game, great game. Uh, some various boxed games. Probotector, which of course is the European version of Contra. Uh, Top Gun. Uh, Jane Silent Bob Mall Brawl. That's an original game. Uh, that came in a few years ago. Uh, of course, Contra and Super C. Let me move this out of the way. I'll show you that in a moment, though. Uh, Contra, Super C, Spy Hunter, Pro Wrestling, 1942. The box ones, I really kind of, it's kind of the ones that I'm interested in. Like, my favorites. Uh, I'm doing with boxes. Um, here's one. Uh, Dush, Dushlan? Dushlan. Uh, pick that up. I want to say it's Mega Cat Studios. I keep getting that confused. Um, one of the first, like, you know, uh, independent publisher games that I bought. Like, it's a new game for the NES. It plays like Tetris. It's not Tetris, but it plays like it. It's awesome. Uh, California Raisins is a kind of a... Uh, ROM hack, if you will. Uh, Mega Man Gamma, Mega Man Ultra, just some wild versions of Mega Man. Uh, Dragon Spirit, a new legend. God, Dragon Spirit is such a great vertical shooter where you play as dragons. Uh, Defender of the Crown, funny story about this one. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, Defender of the Crown, I just, I, I was in the back room of a comic book store and I just saw it there. I'm like, how much? The guy's like, I don't know, 10 bucks. So, okay, sold. So, pick that up. Never played it. I just thought it was pretty cool. Uh, Battle Tank. Uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Actually, uh, now, uh, I would say a very good friend of mine. Um, uh, sold me. Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Uh, some more. Sky Shark. This I bought because I just thought the cover art. I mean, look at the cover art on this thing. That is awesome. That is... That's beautiful. That you can hang up. Uh, we got some uh, Famicom games. Quarth. Quarth, if I pronounce that correctly. Uh, Famicom version of Super Mario Brothers 3. Uh, and probably the original Super Mario Brothers. One of these is Load Runner, one of the yellow games. Battletoads. This is actually a new game. It's the original Battletoads. Don't get me wrong. Re-released on the Famicom, but it was re-released last year or two years ago. So it is a new cartridge. Uh, Hyper Metroid, homebrew game. Uh, Unholy Night, just a terrible game that I picked up somewhere. Royal Rumble, Donkey Kong Classic. Uh, what's hidden behind these? Oh, Cybernoid. That's where Cybernoid is. Oh, okay. I got to stop playing that. And then I got some here. Uh, I picked up some... These are some um, uh, disc system, Famicom disc system games. Right? We got Metro I don't have a disc system yet, so these are just sitting here. Metroid F1 Race. Oh, excuse me. Castlevania. 3D Hot Rally. That's pretty cool. And of course, Super Mario Brothers 2. Beautiful. Uh moving along here. Hey, yeah, this is a pretty cool one. This is my Obviously, SpongeBob SquarePants. Game Boy Advance SP. The only reason why I bought this is because it was the first one with the backlit. Where the screen, like the whole screen was backlit. Not just a little, not just a little light on the bottom. Uh, so that's really the only reason why I bought it. I wasn't, I'm not that into SpongeBob. But it works like a charm. 
Uh, pretty cool version uh, for the Famicom, uh, excuse me, for the Game Boy Advance. Uh, Super Mario Brothers 3. No, Super Mario Brothers, which one is this? What game is this? Super Mario Brothers uh, on the, Famic- on the um, Game Boy Advance. Pretty cool. Homebrew of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Nope. There we go. And then just to go through some of the other stuff, of course, the two uh, Game & Watches with The Legend of Zelda and Super Mario Brothers. Yes, folks, this is a Nintendo Power 100 uh, Game Boy Pocket. I ordered this through the uh, through Nintendo Power when they hit issue 100. I had this, and I had a gold N64 controller with the Nintendo Power 100 logo on it as well, the sticker. Uh, the controller I do not have anymore. Luckily, I still have this Game Boy Pocket. Um, some various games here. Anthony will not want me to show these, but I will. There is my Virtual Boy collection. Those are my Virtual Boy <laughs> games. Uh, some Turbo Graphics games. Some. This is where basically all the um, all the uh, Game Boy games that I've been buying because I feel like Game Boy games have been easier to make for uh, the the system. So these are all independent publisher. Well, not all of them. But first project in the dark, uh, Starhawk and Tailgater re-releases, Doc Cosmo, Deadiest Genesis, Indestructo Tank, and Pine Creek are all independent games, and they're all awesome. All of them play great. Doc Cosmos is actually uh, designed for the Game Boy Color, which is pretty cool. And then I got some uh, Japanese versions, uh, Popeye, Parodius, and Ghostbusters 2. Um, got some more hot sauce. This is uh, the Blues Brothers collection. Uh, really cool uh, mug here from Barcade. I love this thing. Uh, and then behind that, some PlayStation 4 and, and uh, GameCube games. Uh, what GameCube games do I have, actually? You know what? Let's take a look. I have here Star Wars, Rebel Strike, Resident Evil Zero, Legend of Zelda Collector's Edition, yes, and Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Those were bonus discs for pre-orders. Uh, Gradius 3 and 4, Shadow of the Hedgehog, you can see. Um, another, uh, Game Boy game in there. Uh, that one plays kind of like Breakout. I just want to be careful because I don't want to break any of this stuff, of course, because that would suck. Alright. And then I got this collection here. Of course, it was the four set, um, shooter, uh, shoot 'em ups for the Genesis. Because some of those just got released on the Genesis collection. So... Yeah, I was gonna see I have a lot of cleaning to do when I'm done. <laughs> Alright, let's move on down here to my NES collection. So basic I mean some hits, right? 1943, Kung Fu, Tetris, DuckTales, um Mickey Mouse Capage Trophy is a Kickstarter game uh that I picked up. Uh, Castlevania Blood Moon is a ROM hack, I guess you want to call it. This one here, you don't see the title, but that's a Contra hack as well. Uh, G.I. Joe, it's the first G.I. Joe, the best G.I. Joe. Uh, Zelda Double Dare, I bought because I thought I was going to be able to get Mark Summers' autograph. That hasn't happened yet, so we'll wait and see. Uh, Super Spy Hunter, Rampage, got some more here, a couple of DVDs. Cinematic Titanic, Stone Protectors. There's Rainbow Bright. So, some cool games. Some of the uh, the Tengen games versions there. A mystery game. I completely forgot what game that is. I feel like it is a... Because there's no label on it. I feel like it is a Sesame Street game, actually. I bought it completely not knowing what it was going to be. Bar for Space Mutants. Tecmo Super Bowl 2013. <laughs> Blaster Master. Silent Service. Oh, my dad loves his version of Silent Service. Space Balls, the video game. That is not an actual video game. Um, uh, Transformers. That is the version. Uh, the, the Famicom version. Uh, game On was selling a silver, like a pristine silver uh, cartridge, which unfortunately I missed out on. At least I got this one. Uh, and then for a while I was using video game cartridges to get autographs. Yes, let's look at these Jaws games. We got, um, 
over here, start with, with Jeffrey Voorhees, who was the Kittner boy, the first victim in the first Jaws movie. And then, of course, why can I never remember his name? Richard Dreyfus. thank you. Richard Dreyfus. it was in Jaws. Um, so he was pretty cool to sign it. And neither one of them realized that the game is actually based on Jaws 4 and not, not the first Jaws. Uh, Back to the Future. Yes. Harry Waters Jr. Uh, he played Marvin Barry. Cousin to Chuck Barry. He was awesome to meet. And a really cool autograph there. Uh, as we move on, got my Game Boy, my Super Game Boy. Got my Samus. These are pretty cool. I'm pretty sure I've shown these before. Uh, these are the limited run Star Wars uh, games. I've, I've not taken them out of the blister packs. Because I'm pretty sure I have some of these actually separate already on uh, different uh, cartridges. Star Wars should be Empire. I love that red on Empire. That really pops. And then the Game Boy versions. There's Empire. I don't have that on regular Game Boy. So that's why I'm, as much as long as I can, I'm going to keep them in the blister pack. I'm going to show you. So this is what they were selling. This was actually really genius of uh, Limited Run. i got to be honest. Oh, I wish I was able to get that one. Shadow of the Empire. Shadow, Shadows of the Empire was such a fantastic N64 game. Um, not all, but some PlayStation games. Of course, the Tomb Raider series. Uh, WCW Mayhem, Ray Storm. So we got some heavy hitters here, actually. Einhander, uh, Tempest 4, no, Tempest X3. Of course, Spice World. And as we move down, excuse me, Samus. We also have some Turbo Graphics games, some Japanese Saturn games. These three are, and they're from Japan, these three are the Shining Force 3 Remember, Shining Force 3 in Japan were three separate games, three separate chapters. We got, like, one of them um, when it came out here. But uh, still, love love that. And, of course, five, what's on the very bottom? Oh, yeah, Shooter Starfighter. Uh, and Nuclear Strike. Uh, a couple more hot sauces. Kevin Smith and Buddy Christ. Of course, Kevin Smith signed his because he signs everything. And the beginning of September, I will be going to New Jersey to see the premiere of Clerks 3. I actually can't wait for that. Uh, let's move these over. Ooh, that's a little heavier than I thought. All right, Super Nintendo. Let's get into there. Rocketeer. Come on, who doesn't love the Rocketeer on Super Nintendo? Honestly. Uh, a small Super Nintendo collection, admittedly. Um, I can tend to do better. Stone Protectors, that was a Kickstarter. Um, um, the, um, this one here, The Amazing Spider-Man, Lethal Foes, if I remember correctly, is a Japanese ROM that was put on a North American cart. Oh, and then uh, what do we got here? That's Final Fight 2. And just move these out of the way. Just show just a few more. So, Spawn's pretty cool. Uh, Jim Powers, The Lost Dimension, 3D. Actually, it was just re-released on the Switch, I saw. Uh, Batman Returns. That I don't remember originally being good, but good lord, that's such a good game. Uh, a lot of, um, I do have a lot of ROMs here in Hacks, as you can see, Return to Dino Land for Super Mario World, uh, Legend of Zelda, which was from the, uh, their, the online, it's a Teleview, um, right there, Death and Return of Superman, game is phenomenal, and The Adventures of Batman and Robin, right there, Turtles 4, these three games right here are probably three of the best Super Nintendo games. Uh, the only one missing, which I don't have on Super Nintendo, I have it on Genesis, You'll see it later, uh, so actually I'll mention it when I get there. What do I have mine here? Uh, this is uh, me and my dad, uh, WrestleMania this year in Dallas. All right, so we got some more. Alien vs. Predator, that was pretty good. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, I love that game. Super Back to the Future 2, again, Japanese game on a uh, modern, same with Popeye, the North American. Uh, got a couple of handhelds, there's Rampage, nice small collection of... Uh, Game Gear, uh, if I go through that, they're all going to fall apart. Uh, a couple of Pocket, uh, Neo Geo Pocket, this Sonic Adventure, which is upside down. Uh, the Super, the N64 games, really nothing spectacular to talk about, to be honest with you. Hollywood Squares, signed by John Davison. He was kind of a jerk, <laughs> unfortunately. 
Moving right along. Let's go down to the Atari collection. Yes, folks. I have some Atari games. And I still love playing Atari. It's amazing how I've kind of kind of gotten sucked back into Atari almost. So, uh, so some pretty cool games there. Uh, my uh, PlayStation Mini. My captured Charizard. No, Charmander? Charizard. I forgot which one that is. Let me move these back up. Where am I putting these hot sauces? There we go. Don't mind me. These are pretty cool. It's actually my dad's idea. Uh, he saw these uh, tiny arcades. And they all work. Don't get me wrong. Uh, Pac-Man, Galaxian, Space Invaders, and Ms. Pac-Man. And they are full games. They do work. Here, here's Ms. Pac-Man. I might have showed these uh, for one of our Christmas episodes. Batteries are still working. <laughs> awesome. Uh, behind these are some Famicom games. God help me if I know which ones are which. If they're not labeled properly. So they are what they are. Uh, this is a can opener. A bottle opener, I should say. So, Alright, let's get into it. Oh, I'm going to have to shorten this down. Here we got some Genesis games. And this is a, not a bad collection for, for Genesis for me, seeing how I'm basically a Nintendo guy. Um, a lot of these cases I got at, um, they were custom customgamecases.com, I want to say, where they laser print the, the covers and everything, and of course new boxes. I just, I hate, I, I've always hated these. I've always hated the tabs on a Genesis, um, on a Genesis uh, box. Never crazy about it. But nevertheless, that's bo a booger. I love Booger Man. Okay, got some great games here. Let me move this out of the way. Show some more. All right, look at that. A couple ROMs. Sega CD backup RAM, which I always think is pretty cool. Uh, here's my very small collection, but collection nevertheless, of Evercade games. I'm telling you, man. Look into Evercade. They got some cool stuff. All right, we're getting to the end here, folks. Here's some of the rest of the Genesis games. Oh, I was telling you... Uh, where is it? Did I pass it? Um, so the game I was talking about when I was talking up here with the Super Nintendo, uh, with you know, we had Turtles, Batman and Robin, and Superman. What I don't... I used to... Originally, I had it on Super Nintendo. I still want to buy it on Super Nintendo, but I, I have it somewhere here. But now I can't find it. I probably already passed it. Um, uh, Spider-Man and Venom. Maximum Carnage. The game is phenomenal. Why can't I? I know I have it. Oh, there it is. Maximum Carnage. Okay. Cool. So, going back down here, just to round out the Genesis collection. That is a repro. That is not an original Musha. Game Boy Micro. How many of you guys seen a Game Boy Micro? I'm sure everyone has. Break this. Oh, this was my Famicom edition. I love the Micro. Game Boy Micro was so underrated. You, it was so easy to carry with you, and because of the smaller screen, it actually popped better. Like the games looked way better on a Micro. Uh, this here is from Spitfire Labs. Laser etched Contra controller. I love this Contra controller. Uh, you've probably seen my um, Legend of Zelda map that I also have from them, which is pretty cool. Got a collection here of what is this? This is a collection of Turbo Graphics games and e-reader games. How many of you remember e-reader games? Here's tennis. I, the e-reader I have somewhere. Oh, e-readers up here. Totally forgot about the e-reader. So still have these. Uh, they're open. They're already open. So check those out. Uh, oh, let me move over. Er, all right, here we go. Sega CD. Yeah, baby. Look at this. I already have half the collection that's going to be on the, the Genesis 2. I love the TV tuner. The Game Gear TV tuner. It'll never work again, but it's just cool to have. Uh, this is my collection of... These are all... Excuse me. These are all my um, GameCube games. So I know everyone's screaming, where are the cases? Cases are long gone, pal. Long gone. Some more uh, Sega CD. 
Chuck Rock's actually not too bad. Hook is pretty interesting. Uh, Batman Returns on Sega CD? Eh, that one's a little wonky. A little rough. Uh, oh, Soul Feces. <laughs> uh, and then we get to Saturn. Er, move some of this here. Alright. Get to Saturn. Great games. There it is. Shining Force 3. That is my holy grail. So I have it all the way tucked away at the bottom. And then my limited, very small, but still, uh, my uh, Master System games. And then my very tiny collection of Dreamcast games. Game Boy printer. And then basically the final thing, all the way, all the way at the bottom, I have tucked away some Game Boys. Oh, I haven't, you know what? Wow. I haven't looked down on this. I haven't gotten down to this bottom shelf in forever. I forgot what's here. So what do I got? I got some Game Boys. I got some just random books or whatever. I just threw in there. Got a Game Boy Color. Got some printer paper. Got the Capcom arcade stick. The home arcade. I, I've probably broken that out twice. That is just a lump. Got my, uh, my GameCube there. And then that's basically about it. Wow, this uh, actually went a little longer than I thought. So that's the collection that you haven't seen in a while. That's the wall. And it's small compared to a lot of collections I know, but it's my collection. I enjoy it, and I'm adding to it as we go along. Maybe not as much classic games, but I'm working on like new... I just love seeing new independent games for old systems. And maybe one day... I don't have the light on right now, so you're not going to see it too well. But maybe one day I'll really go through the actual systems. But here's a quick look. At some of the systems that I have. So that's basically about it, folks. I mean, that's, again, a little insight into my world. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. And, I don't know, hopefully this was something a little different. You know, I know there's no news to report. What I'm going to tell you. Uh, the Turtles Cowabunga Collection is coming out August 30th. Uh, we just had the 20th anniversary of Super Mario Sunshine. Which a lot of people are praising. I don't remember Sunshine getting so much praise. Um, and by request, we actually did have someone in comments, um, on one of the social media pages, uh, recommend a game for us to talk about. I don't want to say it yet, but it's a really cool role-playing game. I'll say that much. That me and Anthony will, will dive into, again, our history, uh, with it. And with that, I'm going to wrap it up. Folks, you know where to find us everywhere. Just search Retro Gamers Podcast. Uh, this is going to, should be a good YouTube episode. Maybe not so much a good audio episode. But I'll put it up anyway. And remember, August 12th, 13th, and 14th at the Cradle of Aviation Museum on Long Island, right across from the Nassau Coliseum, is the Long Island Retro Gaming Expo. The retro gamers will be there. Well, I'll be there. Anthony, come on, he lives in L.A. I'm not expecting him to show up. But the retro gamers will be there. We're going to do a podcast while we're there. Of course, we want to look around, shop, see what we can do, uh, take some video. Uh, but get your tickets, Long Island, liretro.com. Get your tickets at liretro.com. Not only is there so much stuff to buy, but they're going to have the um, the arcades are going to be out, some great games to play. I'll bring some systems. You know, I'll be futzing around playing as well. Um, and with that, that's pretty much about it. Anthony should be back next week. And we'll catch you everywhere next week on the Retro Gamers Podcast. <laughs>